state's budget and finance director presented Governor Abercrombie's proposed budget for the upcoming legislative session. Economists were also on hand to weigh in on the state's fiscal future. And this morning, we are joined by Senate Ways and Means Chairman, State Senator David Ige, to highlight some of those numbers presented at Wednesday's briefing. Good morning to you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Let's get right to it. Now, the governor has said that we have an $844 million surplus. He's got some big plans for what he wants to do with this money. But uh, I know the economists are saying, let's hang on here. And I think that's something that you're well, agreeing with. Right. Well, it's interesting because the state paid economists were very optimistic that the, the economy continues to grow. Um, the private economists really said that, hey, we ought to be careful. Um, you know, tourism has been driving the recovery. And for the most part, that's um, leveling off. And really, the next driver that they pointed to was really construction. And, and the economists were saying, uh, Paul Bubaker was saying, hey, look at it. Uh, when you look at supply and demand, um, the prices will increase too fast to really drive the kind of growth that they're projecting. So what areas would you like to see some of that spending? You know, we just want to be careful. We want to restore the reserves first and foremost. You know, we want to make sure that we can meet the future obligations for retirees that have already accrued the benefits. So again, you know, we became the first state in the country to make a commitment to those retirees to assure that their health benefits would be available. We want to continue that work. You know, the second thing I think is if you look at all of the demands on state funding, I think we want to put more money into the classrooms. You know, we want to get um, funds to the teachers so that we know that the improvement is made between a teacher and a student and that's where we want the funds to go if there are any excess. <laughs> right. Now I know that the, uh, we had uh, Calvert Young on a, a little earlier this week and he was saying that uh, the administration wants to see the financial reserves up to 10 percent but the general fund only has 5 percent. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, so that was one optimistic. of those things. Right. We, we want to make sure that, that there is sufficient reserves in and, that, and that's really where we should be putting the bulk of the excess money. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that, the budget works through. Well, I, you know, you're running for governor and so how is this going to be playing into the fact that, uh, you know, there might be some conflict here or you might have some no, disagreement? I, you know, I have served all of my career putting the, the people's interests first and I don't intend that th that would change you know I think people will be able to judge what I do everything is available we put all of the budget processes online so people can actually see every step of the way I'm confident that um, at the end of the session people will judge my work and see that I continue to put the people's business first all right so I know that uh, you'll be con continuing discussions today at the state capitol? Yes, we do have the attorney general's office, the governor and lieutenant governor's um, budget, as well as um, DBED and um, Hawaiian Homelands. So there are a number of agencies that will be coming before the joint committees, House and Senate Finance, to talk about their budget. So some thorough discussion before the legislation session starts. Yes, we are starting early because session starts early and this gives us a real good opportunity to assure that all of the budget proposals will have a fair hearing. All right. Well, thanks, Senator, for coming in this morning and we appreciate some feedback on what's going to be upcoming. Thank you. All right.